the CDV 700. This is a Victorine CDV 700 Model 6A. This unit was created for thermonuclear warfare. It features a rugged metal shell made of steel as well as a nickel plated brass probe. Every single piece of this is built with screws and bolts and other thick pieces to make it strong and rugged. It was designed to be used by a not necessarily trained but basically competent person after a thermonuclear war. This is a military piece of hardware designed for civilians. It has an additional external speaker that's been themed and connected to the headphone jack to allow us to hear without headphones because the original unit came with only headphones to hear. It offers a three position switch being incredibly simple to use. In the off position it is off. Switching it to the 1x position. Exactly what is shown in the screen here is exactly what it detects. It ranges from 0 to 300 counts per minute or 0 to 0.5 millirenkens per hour and this is based on a cobalt 60 calibration originally. This unit has been recalibrated with cesium-137. Each tick produces a little tiny move of the dial. In the times 10 mode the scale is now multiplied by 10. Whereas it was 100 counts per minute, it is now 1,000, and so on. So the range is now 0 to 3,000 counts per minute, or 0 to 5 millirenkens per hour. In the times 100 mode, whereas it was 100 and then 1,000 counts per minute, it is now 10,000 counts per minute. Your range is 0 to 30,000 counts per minute, or 0 to 50 millirankins per hour. We'll place in the times 10 mode for the time being. So whatever you see in the scale is now one, uh, 0 to 1000 counts per minute. This unit comes with an operational check source built into it. A piece of depleted uranium built into the actual unit to determine its functionality. Merely cutting the unit on and opening up the beta shield the beta shield protects this unit from beta radiation so that you can detect only gamma. But if you, if you open it up, the Geiger tube is exposed and the beta radiation can also be measured. Placing this against the operational check source will tell us, without the need for a repair facility, if this unit is correctly calibrated. As you can see, we are reading between 2 and 3 millirankin per hour on the times 10 scale, so we know that we are calibrated. The unit is somewhat heavy and high voltage, so we will cut it off before we open it. Switches in the side open up to allow us to remove the actual unit itself and to look inside of it. It is all analog parts, nothing digital. It runs off of four large D cells. It was originally rated at about 100 to 150 hours of battery life, but the reality is you'll probably get much more out of modern day batteries. There are a set of screws in here that can be manipulated to adjust the actual calibration on the fly if you need to, if you need to do that. And all the parts are reasonably easy to repair with a soldering iron and a little bit of additional skill. There is also a circuit diagram included inside. The unit can be easily put back together, requiring no special skills.
the CDV 700, like this unit, was built around 1962. It is still fully functional even to this day. It is water resistant, not exactly waterproof, but water hitting the unit will not hurt it on the top as long as it's not too much, such as gentle rain. If we snap off the actual detector, This is a model 6993 uh, energy compensated Geiger Mueller tube. It's designed to take into account the change in the ability of a Geiger tube to respond to low energy ionization versus high energy ionization. So it more correctly approximates the actual numbers of counts it should be getting from a source as opposed to just raw picking them up the way a modern day pancake tube does. It is not correct to say that a modern pancake tube's readings are false so much as they can be misleading. This one is a little bit more uniform in how it shows things. Turning the unit on to times one, we can now test a few sources and see what kind of readings we'll get from them. Taking the probe, we'll first start out with some natural uranium. Oops, let me move to where you can see that. We've already gone to full scale, so we'll turn to times ten. It takes anywhere up to thirty seconds for the unit to be fully viable, once it's been warmed up, it is good for a accurate reading in about 7 seconds. As you can see, we are looking on the times 10 scale from 0 to 1000 here, so we're looking at about 500 counts per minute for this uranium. Almost 1000 counts per minute. Now for some cesium-137. I keep my plastic disc source inside of a bottle cap, inside of a lead pig of course too, but I use the bottle cap around it because it makes it easy to hold it. It won't fall as easily. It's actually quite useful. We'll put this here, and then we'll put the tube right over top of it with the betel shield open. Even on times 10 mode, we've already maxed out. Let's go to 1 times 100 mode. See if we fall down any. And there we go. Now our scale is 0 to 30,000. And we're settling down to about 10,000 counts per minute. Or approximately 10, make that more like about 13, probably about 13 millirankin per hour according to this unit. Now, of course, we're detecting beta, so that's not accurate. Let's close the beta shield. It's not closed. Put this back over top. Oops. And now switch ourselves to times 10 scale, times 1 scale. We'll see if this shows us accurate millirankins per hour. Oop, we went over. Let's go back to the times 10 and see what we get. In millirankins per hour, with the betas now blocked, which is exactly what this unit was calibrated for. Keep in mind it was originally calibrated for cobalt, uh, for, uh, cobalt 60. we're getting approximately one millirankin per hour. <coughs> now first, now let's test strontium-90. Let's turn the strontium over. We are in times 10 mode currently. With the beta shield covered, we get nothing because the betas are fully blocked. We open the beta shield and we instantly go off off the scale. We'll switch to a times 100. And we may still be, no we're not full scale. We are at 16, 17, 30, 16, 17 thousand counts per minute.
Examining the Polonium-2 source, as you can expect, nothing is detected. This unit is not sensitive to alpha radiation. It only can detect gamma, beta, and perhaps weak x-rays. Perhaps. Now Grandpa's compass. So you have a radioactive item in your house. Can this unit sense it? Let's set to times one and test. The answer is yes. It's not very good at testing for these weaker sources, but if you give it time, you get over 100 counts a minute. Approaching 200. This tube, can, uh, this unit can be fully modernized. Parts on it can be replaced very easily. Additional switches can be added to give it additional functionality. And this tube can be replaced with a pancake Geiger Mueller tube, sim similar to this unit right here, which works on the Inspector EXP Plus. When that is done, the CDB700 is ready to give you another many decades of good, strong use, just like it has before. This is a Cold War relic, but anything built to survive and operate in a nuclear war or post-nuclear war environment has got to be tough.